So then, so let's maybe we talk about what's happening right now, what, sure. what we know verifiably is happening right now with the poles and with the magnetic field. So magnetic field weakening and the northern magnetic pole is definitely moving, definitely moving very fast. And so maybe if he can just paint the picture for what we're seeing happening right now. Sure. So the magnetic pole in the north right now is racing across the Arctic Ocean towards Siberia. It had been relatively stable for a couple of thousand years with very minor movement. We're talking between one to three kilometers over a decade's time. That is not a lot of movement. Now we're seeing 40, 50, 60 kilometers every year of movement. And as it is heading across the North Pole towards Siberia, the southern magnetic pole is moving as well. Now, it's not moving as quickly, although it did have an acceleration in the last 15 years, and uh, it's still accelerating. I'm interested to see what happens over the, the next five years. Um, but even though it is moving more slowly, it is further away from the geographic pole than, right. than the north magnetic pole is. So you could say it's already further ahead in the race. It's just not go, It's not running as quickly right now it has already left the continent of antarctica right yeah right. it's outside of the arctic circle it is outside uh, and it yeah. is heading towards the indian ocean yeah and so it might take a little while for that to catch up to what the northern uh, magnetic pole it is might going. or it might not okay. um these accelerations happen pretty dramatically and there is a th there's one study on this and it, it's by some of the best in the field. And they say that when things really kick in, they will be moving, the, the magnetic poles will be shifting, the magnetic field will be changing at a hundred times the rate that it is today. And just to give you an idea, um, if you consider approximately the middle of the 1800s when, is, is when this began, and that would be when we were at full strength, from the middle of the 1800s up to the year 2000, so call it 150 years, we lost 10% of the strength of Earth's magnetic field. They updated that number again in 2010 to 15%. So it took us 150 years to lose 10%, but only another 10 years to lose 5, which would you know, extrapolate that, that out. 20 years to, to lose that same 10% as it had taken 150 years before. That's a very extreme acceleration. And, you know, one more acceleration like that, and we're talking about, hey, the poles could be moving hundreds of kilometers a year. These things could be months away from actually hitting the magnetic reversal point and sending absolutely everything into chaos. And so the real question and the reason why there's that window, I don't know if it's 10 years from now, 18 years from now, 25 years from now, is because I don't know when that next acceleration is going to occur. If, if something terrible happened and it happened tomorrow, we might not see 2027. I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, there's no evidence to suggest that. But some of the accelerate the accelerations are happening approximately every four to seven years sometimes they're very small sometimes they're very dramatic the next one we should be having is close to 2030 uh, and after that it would be you know 2035 or so those ones based on the pattern of how things have been changing over time because we have the data on this going back in with pretty good detail actually into the 90s uh, so we can see when some of these major accelerations occurred. Um, so 2006 was a big one. Uh, 2023 was a big one. Um, if we get, you know, we're probably due for another one of those about 2040. And so either 2030, 2035, or 2040, we should have one of those major accelerations. And at that point there really isn't much time left. Things are gonna be growing chaotic very quickly on the planet. Okay, and how do we know that the, that the poles have been, that the magnetic poles have been relatively stable for the last couple of thousand years? Uh, we, can, we can go and, and see uh, where 
the magnetic pole was in a couple of different ways. One, by using those needles we mentioned before and say, okay, for quite a long period of time, they all seem to indicate the same thing. Uh, but also, there have been excursions to actually where they think the magnetic pole was for most of the last few thousand years. And where the pole actually is, it's not a needle, it's a baseball bat. And it's not hidden within something, it's sitting right there on the surface. And I'm, you know, this is metaphorical, obviously, but when you actually find that location, it's very easy to do work around that area and see, okay, where has this been? Where was it yesterday? Where was it last year? And so they know for a very long time it wasn't moving around very much. And then, so currently the North Magnetic Pole is really close to the North Geographic Pole. Correct. Right? So it's coming from, it went from what, like the Canada-ish mm -hmm. region, and then it just started to really accelerate, and, and it's kind of moving now past the, uh, the North Geographic Pole, and 10 or so, there you go, yeah, 10 or so years ago, or 15 years ago, it was moving at 55 kilometers per year, and that was up from like seven, five kilometers per year in, in a couple of decades prior to that. But it seems like, do, do, you, do you buy into that it's actually slowed down a bit from, from that 55? No. No. Okay. okay. Um, so basically what we see is, if my hand is how fast it's going, what we see all the time is, there's a speed up and then maybe a slight taper, and then a speed up and a slight taper. And so if you speed up and you get that slight taper, how accurate is, is it when you're in the middle of that taper to be like, oh, see, it's slowing down. It's like, well, in a way you're technically correct, but you also don't really understand the entire process. You don't understand what's happening with the magnetic field. And this is, it's almost like a cherry picked moment. I suppose you could say. Um, and the other thing is a lot, of, a lot of the data that we have with the magnetic field comes with a five-year projection. For 20 years, they have been projecting a slowdown. And so they show that slowdown on the last couple of data points or dots. And then the next report comes out, oh, it didn't do what we thought, but trust us. It's going to do it next time. And then it doesn't happen. And they're like, oh, okay, well, actually, it's still speeding up. But trust us, it's about to slow down. I stopped trusting them quite some time ago. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so is it true that it's heading, that there's like a, a uh, the, so there's the South Atlantic anomaly, which is a point of weakness for the magnetic field in the Southern Pacific Ocean. Um, and, and then... Is there also a, a flux lobe above Siberia that this thing could be heading towards now as its kind of next destination as it continues its path? Um, well, the, when you mention the flux lobes, they're sort of like teardrop-shaped things coming, you know, that, that surround the poles. But those are not fixed. Those move with the poles. So if the pole is where my fingers are meeting, those two teardrops there, they're moving with the pole. So yes, one is out ahead and one is behind, but that's always the case. It is always heading towards a flux lobe and away from one at the same time, but really it's dragging them along with it. And what's interesting is when you think of magnetism, you know, North Pole, South Pole, a bar magnet, they're not shifting and staying on opposite sides of the planet. One is going over towards Siberia. Follow that, keep following that, and you hit the Indian Ocean, right? The South Magnetic Pole has left Antarctica and is heading towards the Indian Ocean. The Magnetic Poles are on a collision course for the Bay of Bengal, which is the northeastern Indian Ocean, you know, in between um, the subcontinent of India and where the Sunda Megathrust, the 2004 Christmas tsunami happened in Indonesia. Um, it's actually right where they're supposed to meet. It's right where that plane just vanished a couple of years ago into thin air. 
a lot of strange magnetic anomalies around the exact spot where the magnetic poles are on a collision course right now. And what's interesting is the exact opposite side of the planet is the South Atlantic anomaly. Right. This is where I do start to break from mainstream science a little bit. They want to say, oh, there must be something happening at the core mantle boundary that is causing the South Atlantic anomaly. I want to be clear. They don't have the first clue what is happening down at the center of the Earth. It is guesswork, sometimes very educated guesswork. At the end of the day, they don't really know. Yeah, um, that's for sure. They actually just came out with a, a, a paper a couple of days ago talking about how, oh, carbon is the reason why we have a solid versus a liquid core, why, why one is solid and, and one is liquid. It's the carbon that caused the solid one to solidify. Brand new discovery just a couple of days ago. Is it true? I have absolutely no idea, and frankly, neither do they. But the point is, they keep coming up with things. The science is changing too quickly for somebody to say, this is the way it is. And especially for a place that we've never been. You know, we know more about Mars than the bottom of the ocean. We know even less about the center of the Earth. Right. Um, That's for sure, yeah. But if you've got a point on the planet and the magnetic poles are moving away from it, you know, you've got a refrigerator magnet, you pull it a millimeter away and let go, it'll probably stick to the fridge. Two millimeters, it might still get sucked in and stick to the fridge. You pull it a foot away, it's hitting the floor when you let it go. Magnetism drops off at one over distance cubed. And so the further away you get from the magnet, the less the magnetic field. The South Atlantic anomaly, the weakest magnetic point on the planet, is the exact spot away from which both magnetic poles are moving. It's the simplest, easiest, and almost certainly the correct answer for why that exists. Right, right. So, so what you're saying is this, the South Atlantic anomaly is a point of weakness in the southern hemisphere of the magnetic field, and both the north magnetic pole and the south magnetic pole are racing towards the exact same spot. They're currently going, well, the north is definitely racing, the south is moving towards that same spot that's at the exact opposite position on the globe of the South Atlantic anomaly. Exactly. Yeah. And so what is that, what is the implication of that? Or what does that mean? Like what's actually happening? What once, once the, the north and the south pole get to the same point and they meet, what is that? Is that the new North and South Pole? Does the South Atlantic anomaly become the Southern? Um, it's ma- very likely that one of the magnetic poles will have its home there in the Bay of Bengal, east of the Indian subcontinent. And the other one will sort of take the natural polar field um setup that Earth has, that most spinning objects have, and sort of pop out the other side of the planet. Maybe that's directly in the South Atlantic anomaly. Maybe that's in Brazil. Maybe that's off the coast of Ecuador, somewhere in that general area. Okay. And so then how long does that, how, so to get from where we are today to that point, again, you're saying 10 to 25 years to, to where that is the reality. And then how long does that kind of maintain itself? Bef- and, and then what happens next? Well, um, the magnetic poles should probably stay there for about 6,000 years. Okay. Um, but it's what happens all very quickly leading up to that and then when that event happens, that is why anybody should care. If, if all this means is, oh, we've got we've to learn how to use compasses differently or we've got to redo the GPS system, for most of us, who cares? Right. Like, right. okay, l- let the nerds of the government figure that out, yeah. right? I don't care. Unfortunately, it's not so easy. 